Christ the King Parish, the beginnings, the hardships, and the successes. On June 15, 1993, Bishop of the Diocese of San Jose, the Most Reverend Pierre Domain, sent out a decree effective July 1, 1993, establishing a territorial quasi-parish or mission and defining its boundaries. Co-pastors were assigned to the mission, Father Dan Derry and Father John Sandersfeld. It soon became apparent that the territory needed to be divided. The Valley Catholic described the new mission as located in Southeast San Jose, and at present, it has no offices, no permanent worship space, no rectory, no money, and no name. It does have two co-pastors. Father John began work on the Evergreen Mission, which held its temporary offices and workspace on a rented property on San Felipe Road, the new church soon named St. Francis of Assisi. They built a new church which included a rectory and graciously allowed the priest from the Edenville Mission to share their housing and funding. We are truly grateful to them for their continuing support. On the other hand, Father Dan Derry had much difficulty in finding space for the Edenvale Mission. After a year of searching, on July 1994, he stated that he had found a temporary worship space and offices and is located in the Edenvale Shopping Center. I'm delighted to even be part of this. I look back and I think, boy, this has been a magnificent accomplishment on the part of all the people over the years, all of the parishioners, and it's uh, wonderful. Uh, when I first came down, I did not know what to consider. Father John Sandersfeld and Evergreen had said that uh, I would take Ever uh, Edenvale, he would take the Evergreen area. So when I came down, I just saw the uh, Edenvale area. There was a uh, uh, nothing more than a dollar store over there and uh, eventually we got that. We got a lot of people from my last parish and some people who began to know there was a new parish coming to work on it and so there was a lot of kind of activity before we actually had the mass uh, which I believe was sometime in October and uh, that was exciting because we were making uh, a whole worship space we were putting in offices, we were putting in uh, plumbing for restrooms and everything. And I always thought that the end result was really quite well done. Uh, a good place to worship, about 300 people, fairly close to the altar. And then it was the community who made the, the church. But the greatest accomplishment was that everyone was working together to create a new parish and a place for worship. So if you ask, what my memories are, the memories were good memories of many people working together and the uh, uh, coming together of a building that would house a new community of people. Finding space for the mission was not the only problem, but so too with the many city codes that had to be overcome even before the very first Mass was held. I had a lot of people who came down and helped, including Carol Ellenberger who's been here ever after, and a lot of uh, young people, uh, Scott uh, Dyer did all of the, uh, the carpentry and uh, people who I had worked with in Morgan Hill came down and they did a lot of the electrical work and other people came down and uh, they did a lot of the detail painting and everything. So it was really very exciting and then we began pulling other people, uh, the, the beginning um, core of the parish together. And I, my memory for details is really bad. All I know is we got it through and I, I liked the end result. And I thought for uh, a number of years it was very adequate, very good, uh, and a very kind of community place to celebrate Mass with. To much hard work and anticipation, the first Masses were celebrated on October 9, 1994. 8.30 a.m. for the Spanish Mass with about 80 people in attendance, and 10 a.m. for the English Mass, with about 120 in attendance. There was a spirit of prayer, worship, community, and celebration, 
The experience was moving, and Father Dan was joyous. But yet, the new church and the volunteers who were there knew that there would be much more challenges to face. The first uh, par uh, challenges were probably even building a community, even coming together as, as a group, um, decided to work for the church uh, in a location that wasn't quite um, easy to work with since we had the bar next to us. Um, and there was uh, other challenges. I mean, we had um, people that uh, were trying to uh, fill places, uh, um, fill uh, spots like being uh, ministers for the different uh, points. And uh, those were challenges, but we came through and uh, we, we have been doing really good on that. Para mí fueron un poquito difíciles porque al otro lado de donde estaba la iglesia de la misión estaba una, can, una cantina o un bar donde estaba este, era mucho ruido y cuando se hacía la misa era un poquito difícil porque estaba la música al lado muy fuerte de repente y, y sí hacía un poquito así perturbaba un poquito. It was so hard because we were not we didn't know what to expect. When we first started, see, when we first started, we didn't know what to expect. It was, it was one room, uh, uh, open room, uh, uh, storefront, which was next to a bar. And when we, people started coming in, we didn't know each other. We came from different parishes. I myself came from St. Maria Goretti. We were assigned, my wife and I, and our family were assigned from St. Maria Goretti. We brought some other friends with us too. They came with us too. And but that time, we didn't know what to expect. It was so new, we were worried because we've never been to a, a storefront mission. I've always grew up to the fact that it's a church. You have the, you know, your altar and all that. And here's a storefront and we have, we were so, actually we were afraid because we don't know what to expect. We thought that maybe we would fail, okay. We didn't, we were so afraid and well, as you know, we've gotten very, very far. Well. When we all started out here, um, I saw a lot of difficulties. And the difficulties was because of where the church was. We were in between a bar and a hair parlor. Uh, I, I distinctly remember one day wherein we were in mass. And during mass, somebody threw a beer bottle through the window of the church. And when that thing happened, it was so funny because Father Norman at that time said, maybe he didn't like my sermons. But within me, I saw the need. I saw the work that needed to be done, in, not only in the community, but to help out the church and, and to grow them in faith. Another challenge that the new church faced was financing. George Arsate was part of the finance committee from the early days. The startup of the church was difficult, uh, but at the same time it was a blessing. Uh, we were blessed to have St. Francis of Assisi's 100% uh, finance the parish. It was the Mission Church, Edenville Church at the time. And so they took care of all the finances and they took care of the salaries, they took care of the rents. It was, it was a blessing in that side. But it was also difficult because uh, we could not define our own destiny, we couldn't make our own budget, we couldn't plan our own growth until we had their parish membership grow where we can subsidize ourselves. To give you an example, uh, the first two years they subsidized us almost 100%. The third year, they subsidized us with about 20, 30,000. The third year is when we made our first budget. And that budget was about $60,000 for the year. Today, this year, 2008, 2009, we budgeted 675,000. So we've come a long way from day one. And you know what? The work is a lot tougher today than it was back when we started. So again, it's been a nice road to go. But soon after the start of the church, it was announced that Father Dan is being reassigned to St. Mary's in Gilroy. Only nine months after the first Mass was said, 
We asked Father Dan on how he felt about leaving the church at its infancy. 